Hey guys, Frank Salas here. Hey, I'm excited to share with you guys some of my top tips on how to process black and white images and get them consistent each time. You know, a lot of us are kind of wondering how do we get the black and whites to look so great? You know, a lot of times we'll click on a preset or an action. Sometimes it looks great, sometimes it doesn't. So here's the key. The key is to actually process the image and there's some steps to do that before you actually go to black and white. So let's give you an example here. Right here in front of me, as you know, as a wedding photographer, I'm dealing with lots of images that have dark suits, in this case, the groom's outfit. And of course, we're dealing with brides who are wearing white dresses. So you can tell that's always been something for me that I've been wondering, how the heck do I get this done? So to me, it's all in the preparation. So let me show you how we do that. So first and foremost, if you go over here to your sliders, you'll see that a couple quick things. We're not really worried about color temperature because certainly it's black and white, so not necessarily going to worry with that. But two things we want to worry about. Number one, I'm going to zoom in here. We want to make sure the exposure, we have enough details starting with the faces. I think most of us that we target that right away. So I'll kind of tone that down, make sure I've got plenty of detail in the faces. You'll notice that's the first thing that we have probably all target. Secondly, take a look at now the white. And of course, thankfully we have this highlight slider. So the secret here is we want to keep all the detail in both the darks and the whites. Now also when I open up the shadows, you'll see I'm going to kind of flatten out the suit as well. So this is the key thing right here in these two sliders, as, as most of us are familiar with, is maintaining as much detail in advance and as maintain the detail in the darks as possible. So in this case, I won't do anything with the whites and I definitely won't do anything with the black. Anytime you add a filter of some type, in this case, we're gonna move on to On One's new Perfect Photo Suite 10 and show you how we actually do add the last final stage, which is the black and white. But this is the secret here is the preparation. Now, normally if you're adding this for just a color photograph in advance, I'm gonna show you one more image. This is the photograph I made a virtual copy of it. And this is kind of how I would have probably just made the adjustment let me zoom back out. If I was showing this to a client, in other words, I've already bumped up the blacks, trying to add a little contrast to it. Um, you'll see here I've already adjusted for the faces. A little bit of detail here, but here's the key. If you notice the adjustments I made here for the black and white, um, I've kind of flattened it out. I purposely added a little bit more and opened up some of that shadow area purposely. So that's key number one. And of course, key number two here is that I want to make sure, same thing, I've re pretty much recovered as much as the highlight, in this case, the dress as possible. Because when you now add the black and white, this is going to be very crucial. Because either you add contrast or a preset, it's going to accelerate. And that's the secret here. When you add a filter of any type, and this could even work with color, but black and white more so, anytime you add a filter or in case contrast here, it's going to accelerate the whites and accelerate the darks. So that's why I purposely are not leaving the image looking like this, because if I now add a filter, it's going to, of course, accelerate both of these. This is already kind of on the edge of being blown out. This is already too dark, so that's why we go a little bit more neutral. So the preparation to me is probably the top tip on creating these images. So now the last stage would be, let's right click here, take this image, we're going to edit in, look for our Perfect Effects 10. Now it's going to make a copy for you, so don't panic. You'll make a copy with the adjustments in Lightroom, that's by default. So whatever you've done here, you'll also come, if you do return back into Lightroom, you'll still have your original file with this adjustment. When the On One Perfect Effects adds the black and white, you'll see it'll come back with a duplicate copy. So again, you'll have both copies that come back and fine tune. Now, it's gonna remember the last filters that I used. So in this case, I was using black and whites. I'll go back here, you have a couple options. If you click on the tab above, you can use any of the many presets that are made. Or, again, you can use the individual filters. In my case, when I click filters, these are all the great filters that I work with. So in black and white, like there's some that I've used that are my favorite. I'm going to click one down here, our subtle selenium. Click on that one time, and now it's going to add the overall black and white effect to it. Now, you'll notice with black and white, first of all, I still have detail here. I still have detail here. That's very important, right? So all I want to do before I add any more contrast here, if I still need a little bit more recovery here, I can simply come over here, bring the highlights so I can see more detail in the dress. So there you go. The suit, I still have plenty of detail there. That's important. Now you notice it, it looked a lot flatter when I brought this in. 
Now, by simply adding a little more darks now, I can bring the blacks over to kind of add a little bit more edgy and it still gives me detail in both sections here and a great black and white. So those are some of the hot tips you want to do. Before you get crazy with adding contrast or more darks, you want to do that later on because if you do that in advance, you'll notice then you won't have any detail left here and that creates kind of a very blown out black and white. So give that a try. I think you'll love it. I go back and forth between Lightroom and the Perfect Photo Suite 10 gives you great results and give it a try.